All right, back on the Firebird. 1970 Firebird, my uh, next step that uh, I'm gonna be doing on the Firebird. Uh, today, I am going to be installing a set of QA1 coilovers on the front of the Firebird. So, I already got the wheel off and I am going to start getting it clear so that I can start uh, putting the coilovers on there. So I already had drop coils on there, taking them off. Uh, not because I didn't like them, but I am slowly but surely working underneath the sheet metal while I'm working on the outside of sheet metal to make it more and more uh, track and, uh, you know, toge ready, basically, you know, uh, uh, um, mountain pass ready. So when I'm ready to go for a run with the boys, whether it be up at the track, you know, or at the autocross, I can go and uh, have no problem. Especially if I want to take it to Blood Mountain or Tail of the Dragon. More likely Blood Mountain than Tail. So, um, it already has a beefy sway bar in it that I put long ago. It's dirty as hell under there, but you're going to let me slide on that. Um, I'm still doing some other stuff in there metal wise uh, uh, for sheet metal and um, but the tire is clear I got some really really wide tires in the front so I got the uh, eight uh, right now 19 by 12s in the front and they clear without any issue uh, primarily because of the fender flares that I make and the stuff you've seen me build uh, uh, in the other videos and now I want to dial in the ride height so one of the things I got to do, one of the first things I got to do is I got to get this uh, other coil out. So it's like your old way that everyone knows. You compress the coil and get the, the uh, shock out and so on and so forth. But a lot of times people don't have the tool for this particular uh, setup to get the shock out. And man, I'm going to tell y'all, it's not an expensive tool. I would just buy it. Now, you see it in there? right there bam you see it that right there is a two-piece tool let me take it out of here it's like this so the two-piece tool has a uh it looks like kind of like a dowel that has like a a, a uh, keyway on the inside you can kind of see a little minus sign and that keyway actually goes in on the top of the shock just like that all right might be hard to see, but you can kind of see it. So that keyway basically makes it easier for the shock to not spin. While the shock is not spinning, this one right here, maybe as you can see a little bit better like that, all right? So this one right here is a sleeve, and this sleeve actually goes right down over the keyway and spins that nut off. Ah, spin the nut off! So it goes up, and over and down on it and so you can spin that guy around so when you got it like that it takes the shock out pretty easily so I'm gonna take that out add that tool to your your tool list because really uh, oh man a lot of times what they do is they put the car on the ground on its weight and try to spin that bolt off uh, not off rather and uh, it's uh, <laughs> It's a pain to do it on the ground, but when you have it up in the air like this, it makes everything a whole lot easier. So check it in a second. Got one side completely clear to put the coilovers on. And now I'm on the other side and I got most of it out. I got the uh, spring compressor in there and it already tightened up the uh, spring so it's off load. Uh, now I'm taking off the sway bar ends and um, freeing that up so I can slowly remove the upper ball joint uh, so I can release the uh, A-arm. Uh, 
So yeah, that other side fought me a little bit. Uh, funny thing is, is, the thing about those spring compressors, it depends on how you set it up. If you can get it up there as high as you can so it can comp uh, compress it as much as it can, sure, that you, you're gonna get away with a less amount of, uh, of a headache, but the spring pocket in here is quite deep. And what happened was, was the dang hook caught the side of the inside of the spring pocket. So I had to, you know, really assess that the, um, the pressure of the actual spring compressor is what's keeping me from unhooking it. So I had to uh, release it while it was still in the pocket. So it didn't jump out on me, it didn't kill me and stuff like that. It scares the hell out of everybody else, but uh, sure enough, I got it out. So here we are on this side. Now with this side, uh, it's pretty much straight forward, just like the other side. The only difference is I think I, uh, I said it a little bit better. So now that's fingers crossed because really that upper uh, uh, spindle right here, that thing could be a hoe to release. Now I've taken it off before on the other side and it's marred up the threads. And that has been a bad thing trying to get it back up in there to where I had to re-thread the, uh, the ball joint. So now, fingers crossed, I'll get it off and it'll be just fine, right? And just like that, she's free. So I'm gonna pull out the spring. Now I got the I got the brake and the spindle, uh, not the brake, just the spindle uh, cradled with this wire here because I don't want to put a lot of strain on the lower ball joint and the uh, the, the lower steering uh, bar. So as I lower it down. This is already compressed, the spring is. So since the spring is already compressed, it should be pretty straightforward as I let it down. So you gotta always, whenever you work on these kind of things right here, you gotta always have a little bit of support. A lot of times I use wire or chain when I have it. I use the chain on the other side and uh, get it clear so that when I actually let it down, it didn't come flying down and smash down into the ground. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Did you get hooked up in there again, girl? She wants to surprise me. Let's see if she did. Did she get hooked up in there? She sure enough did. She sure enough did. So let's see if she'll just straight come out. And always have trusty, trusty bar. If she doesn't want to come out, then I'll have to put it on the, uh, I'll have to put it on the release, which I may just do that for the hell of it. Why not? Let's just see if she can fit in there. Might be a bit too long with this end. So what we'll do is we'll just put the bare end of the, uh, and relieve some pressure. So sometimes when you can't actually get to it, you gotta go with it through the old school way. Go in there and do it manually. Keyword man. That's why they call it manually. So this was the same as the other side since it was compressed and those sleeves pockets are so deep, I hung up. And since I hung up, I have to decompress the spring to get it on, to unhinge, to unhook. And uh, there she goes. What is that? She's still hooked on it. And there, see? So she's loose in there. Pretty much I can take that out uh, by hand almost. But you can see now that it's clear why, why we use the spring compressor, y'all. Then what I like to do is put it back up so that, take some of that, 
I'm gonna have pressure off of that lower ball joint. And there it is. So, that, my friends, is how you remove and make clearance for the coilovers that are going on a second gen. I plan to clean this up a little bit right uh, before I put the stuff in, so you can see that one in a little bit. Check it in a second. So yeah, the coilovers that I'm installing are these QA ones right here. Really nice piece, I think. They're uh, single adjustable, as you can see right there. And uh, they're pretty nice, especially for the price and for the performance. Uh, I've ridden in cars that have QA ones, and this is uh, this is like my second set, and um, I like them. I like them a lot. I do think there's a few things that are a must whenever you get these and install these. One of the things uh, you really need, and it's not uh, included in the pack, is these thrust washers. See them? They got little rollers inside of them right there, right? Now, these little thrust washers, normally what they give you is just these regular ones right here. See that? And the key difference between the two, if you look close, you got a flat one and then you got ones that are like little rollers on them, little needle rollers, right? And I'm gonna tell you, if you put these flat ones on and just them they'll work but boy you're gonna fight and i mean fight like ufc sunday big game fight because oh man it's just metal on metal just gee, 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 try to go uh across itself this roller one i swear like this one right here makes the huge difference it rolls like butter because of it. <clears throat> so, that's one of the first and foremost big pieces that I like to bring up, all right? Now, let's talk about putting it together. All right, so these come with two different, out of the condom, two different uh, lock nut and seat that basically butt up against each other when they're actually installed on the coil, on the coil over like this, right? And to assemble, you would take the lar I mean the uh, first locking nut and put that, spin that mug to the bottom, all right? The second one, throw that on there and spin that guy to the bottom. Now, I'm just showing you how you assemble them, but uh, one of the biggest things actually when you assemble them, I like to put it on after, because I like to run these nuts back up them, these adjuster cuffs back up, is you must, and I'm talking must, put on anti-seize. Now, Anti seize, <laughs> it ain't your, it ain't your auntie said. No, you can't have that. No, like that's anti seize is the compound that you put on this that will stop it from galling. Okay, what is galling? Galling is essentially kind of cold welding of metal on metal, especially in uh, aluminum. Galling, it it just sound bad, don't it? Galling, that's galling, right? You don't want any galling on your <laughs> on your coilovers because really you want these to be able to spin freely. And that's the key here. That's everything that I'm talking about with these and this and so on and so forth is so that you can freely spin it while it's in the vehicle because you've got very limited space and very limited travel when you, have, when you use your, uh, your coilover tool. Now, once you got it all assembled, which we get to about this spot, and what you do is it's got three of these little rings, right? The, the first one, which is flat, it has no uh, rollers on it. That one goes on first. Then, the pretty girl herself, she's the one that goes in the middle. Then one more on top of that, and that makes the sandwich of it all end. See that? Free spinning. 
When it has it like that, it makes it totally easy to get up and down. Then finally, you throw the big girl on top right here. The big snake, the coil, and then you put the bushings and the nut on top and all that kind of that. See it? All right, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this all lathered up with anti-seize and then I'm gonna get it up in the car. Stick it with me. So, QA1, back under the Firebird. The inside of this fender well was pretty jank, man, to be honest. I was like, you know what? I feel kind of bad putting it in there with it being so grimy and dirty. I said, let me just go ahead and clean it up in there. So I cleaned it up, grinded a bunch of stuff down and painted and, uh, and uh, resprayed in there. Uh, I still definitely got more stuff to do on the underside, but for now, Good, looks good. Now, I got the QA1s assembled, <clears throat> and uh, I've got a generous amount of uh, Permatex on there, so she's kind of brownish, it's copper-based stuff. Uh, I like the copper-based stuff. We can use the aluminum. I don't want to look like the Tim Man, so I'll just go with this, because you can't tell on my own skin. I got the copper tone. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna get this up in there, and we're gonna see, I got it set 16 notches from the bottom. I like it in the middle and then I'll work down. Uh, I've got it on the middle to low setting so I can actually push this guy down like that. You can see the shock is trying to make its way back up but I pushed it down so I can actually slide it up in there pretty generously high. Uh, and then I'll put the jack underneath the bottom and then uh, push it up there and get it locked in and see how she sits. And just like that, she's installed. Now she's coilovered. So this last little piece, uh, as far as when you install coilovers, is you're going to want to learn how to adjust it. So I have my own spanner wrench from my Volkswagen days. This is an H&R spanner wrench. You can kind of see it. See it. It's got a little hook on it. And this, I'll show you uh, how to basically get in there and turn it so you can see inside there, right? And that's the coil over it's installed. And the spanner wrench locks into these little spots right here and you can turn and twist them and tighten them up like that. And then the bottom lock nut, you back it against itself, against the top collar and there you go just like that. So as you see, the coilover is in there. And as it sits in there, you'll have to raise and lower it a couple times to get the exact right height you like. What I like to do is I actually like to count the threads of the coil and match them on each side. Now, how do you do that? Well, one of the things I like to do is I like to get this little uh, a little pin tool right here. Kind of hard to see. Now that pin tool, I usually like to just get in there and I count from the coil. Actually, let's start from from the bottom there. Come down. So as you level out. You can kind of see, I go one from the actual divot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I match that on the other side. So that's basically it. Once you actually set the ride height and put her back the way that she was, you can actually at that point drop it on the ground Let's do that. Let's set her down. Let's set her down. 
and let's see. Let's see how she looks. Now she goes. And now she's all the way. The eagle has landed. So there, there she is, just like that. But that's it. She'll settle a little bit, but essentially I got a fingers width of, uh, of tire uh, space from the top of the tire to the fender. And that's actually what I wanted uh, because I want, I got mature height. I might be short, I might got a kid's height, but I got mature height as far as my lowered cars go. So there she is, bam.